back to my channel. In today's video, we are continuing our Christmas in July tag series. Uh, this one is uh, part two, and I am going to use some Pink Fresh Studio and some Altenew and a little bit of, um, I think that this particular die set is actually from Simon, but I don't know for sure. Uh, this is just a nesting stitched rectangle uh, tag die, and I am using the largest one. What I'm showing you here is uh, something inspired from Jennifer McGuire. She started to, or she puts like a uh, inspiration on how she wants to use that particular stamp or die or whatever it happens to be. She kind of writes it all out so that when she's able to craft next, everything is kind of ready to go. She's already got an idea on where she's headed. So I have some hammer mill cardstock here. I also have some Versamark ink. We're going to do some gold embossing. This is gold, super fine detail embossing powder from Ranger. I have my anti-static powder tool. I also have this uh, Ina's Alpha from Pink Fresh Studio. I bought this a couple years ago, I think now. Um, again, showing you that... Uh, I'm going to use this in the future, and that's kind of the idea that I have for it. Um, here are some Altenew markers I'm going to be using today. Uh, that Inus Alpha has stamp, die, foil plate, and stencils. Um, I'm just going to be using the stamp and the die today. Uh, I have Altenew inks in Pink Pearl, Lagoon, Grassfield, and Coral Bliss. Uh, I kind of want to do a little non-traditional color scheme for Christmas in today's video, in today's tags. What I have here is the first half of the letters, um, and I have used this stamp previously, and when I used it previously, I cut it apart. Um, I know that some people don't like to cut their stamps apart. I don't have a problem with it. I'm showing you here that it lines up just fine. Um, all you have to do is kind of nestle the stamp back into, it, it'll, it'll fit back in like a puzzle piece. It doesn't harm it as long as you cut in between the stamping lines. I'm going to pick the stamp up with the door of my stamp positioning tool here. And because we're doing some embossing, I am using my anti-static powder tool to go over the entire surface and using just a dry brush to kind of brush that around so that it's evenly coated. And then I'm going to use my Versamark ink to stamp that down. I stamp it down twice. Uh, just because I feel like I get a better ink coverage. Um, I probably could use to re-ink my stamp pad, my ink pad there, but I haven't done that. Um, it probably stamped fine the first time. I just like to stamp things twice. It's just kind of habit now. I'm going to pour on that super fine uh, detail gold embossing powder from Ranger, tap off the excess, and I'm going to... Um, do this first half of the alphabet once and then I have to do the second half of the alphabet twice. The reason for that is I'm going to spell the word joy and I'm going to spare the word no L on the other tag. So I need two O's and so I need to stamp that particular one twice. Um, what you could do is um, just kind of do some selective stamping. I figure I can use the leftovers for a different project some other time. And I'll show you how I actually store those because there's quite a few of them. Um, but you could do selective stamping and selective die cutting where you're not, you know, quote unquote, having as much waste. Uh, but again, I said that I could, I can use this again for a, a later project. Uh, like I said, I have to stamp the um, second part twice. So here is that. And I'm going to do the same process. Uh, pick up the door, pick up the stamp at the door of my stamp positioning tool apply my anti-static powder tool, ink it up with a verse marking twice, pour on the embossing powder. I let my heat gun heat up for quite a while. I was cleaning up a lot of the other uh, stuff on my desk just to give myself some more space, and I was letting my gun heat up that entire time. Uh, the hotter your gun is, the less likely you are to have warping. Um, it's easy to know when a metallic embossing powders are set. They go from kind of grainy and dull to shiny and smooth. And so I'm just going to go through and heat set all of this. When I'm 
think I'm done, I'm going to kind of tilt it in the light just to kind of catch and see if there's any grainy parts. And I will hit those again with that heat tool in case there are. And then we can move on to the die cutting. Pink Fresh has these all as one entire piece, uh, the dies anyway, and that is super helpful because through one pass of your die cut machine, you get all of these um, individual die cuts, as opposed to having to sit there and you know position each individual die, which takes up a lot of time. So here I have all of these extra dies. I'm just going to put them in another die uh, uh, stamp and you know storage pocket. Um, I had some from a previous crafting session. I actually made tags for uh, Christmas a few years ago now, probably like three years ago. Um, and I just kept all of my little extras and I actually slipped those back into the stamp storage pocket with all of the other coordinating items. So here I have cut out the largest tags from craft cardstock. This cardstock is from Paper Studio. It's probably between like a 65 and 80 pound, probably closer to an 80 pound. And I'm going to take some of these alt new artist markers and I'm going to color in these images. They do have coordinating stencils. That is totally an option for you to use, but I wanted to um, use my markers today. I felt like it'd be a little bit faster. And so all I'm doing is taking uh, some of these markers and going through and coloring in these images. Um, like I mentioned before, I kind of wanted to have a little less traditional, you know, Christmas red, Christmas green uh, kind of color scheme. Um, I felt like those colors, the colors I'm using kind of pop off this, um, this tag really well. But of course, you could get, definitely go traditional if you so desire. I just wanted to have a little bit of a different color scheme today. So all I'm doing is going through and coloring in these images. Uh, using those artist markers that I mentioned to you before in the beginning of the video. So here is them all colored. Um, I like this uh, color combination pretty well. We're going to do slight things just a little bit different uh, for the Noel. Um, I'm going to actually color in the colors, uh, the letters themselves in the green. Um, I like the joy but I don't feel like there's a whole lot of contrast between the light color that I colored the actual letters in and the darker pink that I colored in the flowers. I could have gone back and maybe picked a darker color for the florals or, or vice versa, um, but I decided to leave it uh, just because I felt like it was, it was fine and I didn't have to, but going back, if I was going to make this again, I probably would have chosen a darker color for... Um, either the letters or, or the flowers, just so there was more contrast. So I'm going to finish coloring in the Noel, and then we will be able to move on. So the Noel is all colored in. I like the green a little better. It looks kind of different on screen than it does in real life, but it's still very pretty. Um, I'm showing you here, I kind of would get out of the lines. And so all I'm taking is a Jelly Roll, Sakura Jelly Roll pen in the eight and just kind of coloring over those X sections where I got out of line. And you can't even see that I colored outside the lines. That's how an easy way to kind of correct that if you get a little, a little out of hand, a little crazy with your coloring. So I didn't actually intentionally intend this, but um, I kind of laid the letters over those tags and I felt they looked kind of plain. So I did run them through a Doris uh, embossing folder. I did spray lightly mist to the front and the back of those tags before I ran them through my die cut machine with that embossing folder. That just helped to kind of prevent cracking. Um, they are kind of delicate at this point. Uh, if I really wanted to, I probably could split them you know, apart along some of those die cut lines, but um, they're okay. So. I took some instant dimension foam tape from Altenew and applied some of that to the back of each of these letters. How I did the joy is I just did the top, the J and the Y and then nestled the O inside the middle of that and that spacing, that worked out pretty well for the spacing. I lined up the J with the hole in the top of the tag and then kind of aligned everything else around that. So that worked out well for me and the joy. The Noel was a little more tricky the Noel was a little more tricky, but um, I was able to kind of get everything lined up like I wanted to. Um, 
it just took a little more doing. And I wasn't exactly happy with the alignment, how I aligned everything, and I'll show you in the end how I kind of fixed that and um, made things look a little more centered and proportional. For the two and the from on the back, I'm gonna use this holiday tag sentiment set from Altenew. There is a to and from that kind of have some open letters that mimics a little bit the letters on the front of the card. I'm showing here to, uh, Cracked Pistachio. In my head, this was going to turn out darker because it was on Craft cardstock. And I completely forgot that Distress Oxide is layer on top. They kind of sit on top. They don't necessarily like absorb into the paper, paper like a regular dye ink because of that pigment property that they have. So this was a little too bright, um, a little too blue. Um, I was trying to kind of match the green inside the Noel, so more of like a grass green. So I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to actually come in with, I think it's mowed lawn. And I'm going to stamp right over that uh, cracked pistachio on the one tag and I liked that a lot better. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that on the other tag as well. This is just to, I, I die cut out that tag four times. Only two of them did I apply the embossing folder to. Um, obviously that will be the front. This is going to be the back. Um, this just gives you a cleaner finish uh, to the front and the back of your tag, just giving you a more polished product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this around and stack them together. Now, I forgot, or I, I discovered, I'll say that through that embossing that dry embossing process, the tag warped a little bit. My intent was to go ahead and kind of glue them back to back, but because that front tag had warped a little bit, I decided I would just string them together. So all I did was take a piece of white Baker's twine. This is from Paper Studio. Cut off a length of that. I tied it. I uh, looped it together. Put that loop through the tags and then... Um, Put the string back through the loop if that makes any sense it's probably easier to watch me do it than have me explain it i think having me explain it is more confusing um, and then i just tied a little knot at the top and then that is the completed tag and i'll do that for the joy one as well and then these are the tags done for the most part but like i said i didn't like how i had that noel spaced i thought it looked kind of bare at the bottom so i am bringing in some nouveau drops i haven't used these in a coon's age um, I'm bringing in some Nouveau drops. This is in the color Simply White. But you can use any color that matches your product. I mean your project. Um, I kind of squished that out onto a scrap piece of paper just to make sure that there's no bubbles. And then I push it onto my project. Um, I do tap it on my fingers or my desktop just to kind of round those dots out a little more. Um, and I did that toward just a line of them at the bottom of the Noel, and then I kind of spread them out um, on that Joy. That Joy's alignment was pretty good, um, but to just kind of make these feel like a completed set or like they go together, I decided to put some of those Nouveau drops on the Noel one also. So once I tap those together and on the desktop, they are complete. Um, I hope you enjoyed these. I hope you feel inspired. And um, if you haven't watched that first video, I hope you will go back onto my channel and find it and watch it and get further inspiration. Um, until then, we will see you next time. And I appreciate you watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.